evening. It is six o'clock on Friday night here on the West Coast in California, where we are still spiking for COVID-19 numbers. So uh, if you're in California, wear a mask, please, 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 please. Um, you know, I had my wisdom teeth pulled out last week and I'm sorry, I apologize we didn't get the video up to you. Stuff happens, can't control life, life happens. But um, I wanna thank you for being here tonight. You're watching The Glam Show. Uh, and you know, it's been a week. It's been a week, you know. Last week was crazy just because I had my wisdom teeth out and like I had to recover, not even from like the pain, but I'd say the, what's it called? I don't even know, the medicine they put me on. And I went under and I wasn't used to that. I haven't had surgery before ever. And I, well, oh, the anesthesia. Yeah, I, have, I was not used to anesthesia. I had a, like a splitting headache for four days after. It was so hard to concentrate on anything. But, and I just felt like I didn't do anything in all those days after my wisdom teeth because I, I couldn't. Like I, and I felt like those were wasted days. And then, you know, life's catching up to me. Some stuff's happening. A lot, of, a lot is going on. Um, summer's ending, thank goodness. I'm, I've never been a fan of summer, personally. But uh, summer's ending, and you know, as I move on to college and I move on to this next chapter in my life, getting ready in the middle of a pandemic has been frustrating. And as much as I understand what's going on, it, it can have an effect on our daily lives. So, you know, having to plan this, uh, you know, I want to thank my school. I know they don't watch this, but I mean, they've done a great job of getting us information and helping us understand why everything that they're doing is that way because no one is going to create the perfect back to school plan because this is unprecedented. It's never happened before. Uh, and so I feel like the way my college is handling it, I'm proud to be going to that college. Um, I am still going back to school. I, I think I told you guys that, but uh, New York, we are, if you're flying in from a state with spiking numbers, you are quarantining for 14 days. Uh, so I'm going to be flying into New York and I'm going to be somewhere for 14 days uh, all by myself and I don't have a problem with that. I like being by myself. I'm a bit of an introvert in that sense but you know uh, I have to get there before school starts so kind of sped up my timeline a little bit um, and while that's okay you know I'm just kind of like oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to say bye to my friends the way I kind of always envisioned it. You know, my mom's not going to be able to come and help me move into my dorm because she can't stay in New York for two weeks. So things are changing and like you adapt and you accept them and so I'm dealing with them. But uh, it's definitely going to be memorable no matter what and I'm excited, definitely. I, I told you guys I'm in class right now and I'm just itching to do more. Um, so I'm still loving that but then the end of the week you know Friday end of the week reflecting that's kind of my reflection for this week I had a lot like ex of exciting things happen like for me like the little happiness inside me is like all bubbling because Taylor Swift dropped an album last night surprise T Swift 8 come on you guys know I'm a diehard Taylor Swift fan. What, pretty much the very first person that I listened to without, you know, my parents' influence. It was me and my friend in our room, and that was the first artist we listened to that my parents were like, you need to listen to this, right? And of course I love the music my parents have shown me, but she is kind of what guided my musical taste. And uh, for her to release another album, out of the blue, right when I needed it too. It's the kind of album. It's a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a sound change for her. It's more slow and it's chill, you know. And it's what I think we all need right now in this time, in this hectic time. Uh, so I'm gonna be playing five songs from that tonight. My first five that I was like, I listened to the whole album. And I'm like, whoa, that those are it for me right now. Now talk to me in two weeks. I'm probably gonna have new favorites because that's how I am. Uh, but then the other thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is Hamilton. And <sighs> Hamilton came out Disney Plus. If you don't know, it's a Broadway musical. It came out on Disney Plus July 3rd, the day before the 4th of July. And why? Well, because, I mean, we talk about the Revolutionary War in Hamilton because Alexander Hamilton was one of our founding fathers. And for someone who loves history and U.S. history, thanks to my father who made us like history no matter what, but we kind of found our own 
niche uh, eventually. Mine just happened to be Civil War and Revolutionary War. Um, you know, I, I know a lot, and I'm, I was so excited. I, I was planning to go see Hamilton on Broadway, you know, as soon as I could. So I, when they announced they were releasing it, I was like, oh, my goodness. But I didn't get to watch it at first just because I had other stuff going on, more important. And so now I've watched it seven times. And <laughs> it's, I, it hasn't gotten old for me yet, and it probably won't. It's something that I feel like has redefined what we can do when we're t retelling our history, right? Uh, and it's kind of controversial in some ways because some people feel like at this point in America, why are we retelling Hamilton's story when, you know, the founding fathers, slavery was around, we had this going on where black lives weren't counted. Uh, but at the same time, this is our history. And for me, the entire premise, I think, for me, for Hamilton, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, the person who wrote it, the person who had the crazy idea, wrote the majority of the songs, he's Latino. And to he see him starring as Alexander Hamilton and the rest of the cast, the majority of the cast, be black or persons of color, that, I mean, that means so much to me. When we talk about representation, I mean, for me to see that is something that I have longed for for a very long time. Uh, I, you know, growing up, I've, I've talked about this before. Like, I didn't see m many women who looked like me, or more specifically, women who were Mexican, right? And I still haven't seen that very much. And for me, I did look up to more black women because there were more black women. Not enough, I'll be the first to say that, there's still not enough representation for black people in the media. But I still had them to look up to in regards to, uh, I, there were more of them than there were of me. So I have looked up to that. And the fact that they are Hamilton, we're retelling history for our time. I think that's very important. And so the cool thing, so that's really all I'm going to talk to you guys about. But before I go on, that's this tonight, that's what I'm going to focus on just because Taylor Swift and Hamilton, that's like everything for me right now. <laughs> Um, other than school, but um, so the cool thing I think about Hamilton is that not just that you know it's a black and person of color cast, it's the way they retold the story, the way that while there are, you can never have perfect history retold, right? There, the way that it has revolutionized, I think, Broadway in terms of it's an R&B, hip hop, rap genre of music we don't see that, you know, it's, it, we don't see that. And so they, what they did with Disney Plus is that they also made like an after show. So you watch Hamilton, go watch the after show. And I'm telling you, you may want to watch the after show first, you know, uh, it's called, one second, it's Hamilton, history has its eyes on you. And that's actually a song, you know, that they sing in the in the in the show and it, but that's that's the title right and it's with Robin Roberts she is kind of your host and with uh, the original creators of Hamilton and the main uh, the the original cast right and that is what is on Disney Plus is the original cast and I I I love that cast I mean and just like the thing is when you watch Hamilton it makes you want to know more. And the thing is, you don't just need to learn more about those specific characters, but they're not characters, people, right? Those specific people. You can go and find people that were a part of history that maybe our history books didn't include because of the color of their skin. Because there were still people around in history that were trying to make a difference way back when. Just like the Founding Fathers led a revolution, there were other people that were a part of that. So, let's see. So, and then they have, so they have the after show. Go watch that. I would recommend watching that first just so you kind of know what you're getting into. You know, and they, they don't show you much, much of the show. It's like clips and they're, you're really talking about what's, what, how the cast feels about releasing it now and what we're going, going through. And, you know, I was talking to my mom about it and like we had an argument, not a bad argument, but just that I love the fact that I can talk to my parents 
uh, and they respect what I have to say in terms of like a younger generation standpoint and what I'm seeing and I have so much from, to learn from them still and how sometimes they learn from me. And so my mom and I were talking about, you know, how even though this is happening in our world, this came out a few years ago. It first premiered in 2015 and now it's coming out to the public, right? Because to go see a Broadway show is not, it's not necessarily the easiest thing you can do. And Hamilton is more, one of the more expensive shows, but they have made it available and made it educational, right? Because it's history, educational so that you can go and it's be what they're doing is benefiting. So the first thing is uh, the Hamilton education program, it's called EduHam. And they started that to bring it to, uh, the, it's with the Gil Gilder Lerman Institute and they bring it into the classrooms to talk about the founding era, but then they also get to go see the show. And for most kids, uh, you're, you're not gonna be able to just buy like a $200 ticket to a Broadway show, especially when you're that young. And if you wanna see Hamilton, if that's something that int interests you, them making it available, uh, it, some, not something that's done very often. And then you also have um, the main, uh, what is okay sorry my internet was moving so the main female character eliza hamilton who i think after learning more about her because she is in hamilton a very big character in hamilton but not necessarily our history books after learning more about her i'm like she's kind of more badass than he was in my opinion i am a woman you know so i'm looking at everything she did after his death to honor his legacy not necessarily even hers but his legacy she did all of these things so that no one would forget what her husband did for America, right? But she, she did them. She established the first private orphanage in New York City. I mean, come on. Like, this is a woman who was living in a time where women weren't a part of the, in the conversation, a part of the conversation. And she was still doing it, again, for her husband. But we look back now and I can say, no. I'm gonna, that's Eliza that did that. He did the base stuff, I believe. Yeah, yeah, he did a lot for our country, but she carried it and made it so much more. Uh, and I loved learning about her because we love learning about women. So real quick, so it got 16 Tony Award nominations and it, I had heard some of the music before even watching it, right? Because you can go and you can get the, uh, the playlist or the, the soundtrack on Apple Music or Spotify or something like that. And like I was telling our amazing producer KP over here that I knew all the lyrics to the rap battles, the cabinet battles before I even watched it because when I was in AP US history, I listened to those songs so often. And I, I can tell you right now, I got at least two questions right on my AP test because of those two songs. Um, but so the main uh, character for, or the main woman, female, Eliza Hamilton is played by Philippa Sue, and I think she's gorgeous. I really do. I'm like all on her now. I'm excited. She's got a movie coming out this year. I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to like be on everything she's doing. Uh, she went and she visited the orphanage that Eliza Hamilton uh, started. And so she, th that's one of the questions Hamilton asks is what is a legacy and how do we keep going and how do we make it better and so so for her she wanted to honor Eliza's legacy so she, what is it called hold on basically she partnered with the orphanage and through philanthropy they're doing okay one second this is what we do when it's live so it's called the Eliza project and they have multiple programs so four or five weeks with kids who have tough lives and they make it about art and spending time together and it's with the characters, the cast members of the show. I mean, I would love to spend some time with some of those cast members, you know? And then Eduham, they get to go to the uh, actual theater and they get to perform their own raps, you know? So it's, they're giving back to kids but also teaching them part of our history and making sure that history is not just, we're never gonna forget it, but it's not something that, oh, I have to go to history class now. I mean, that's how I used to think about it. 
<laughs> when I was really young, I was like, what? this is so boring. Like, why am I doing this, you know? But obviously history repeats itself. We're seeing it happen now. And I, like, I think about right now, I think about a line in the show, revolution is messy, but now is the time to stand. And I think about that and I'm like, that is perfect for what we're doing right now. People don't really understand what's going on and why we're going to such great lengths to advocate for Black Lives Matter. But the thing is, you, you can't necessarily protest and not have it be messy in some point. Revolution is messy, but now is the time to stand. This is a revolution that we're having in present day. And I think one of my favorite songs from the actual musical is the Skylar Sisters song. And they talk about in New York, right? And it's like, in New York, the revolution is happening in New York. And not necessarily in New York. It's happening all over our great United States, right? But that they are so happy to be there and in this time because it's happening. And that's how I feel. It's frustrating and confusing to be living in what we are right now, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I get to tell my kids that, yeah, I lived through a pandemic and Black Lives Matter was going on, and they're going to be like, what was that? Because, you know, I hope that my kids and their, my grandkids are going to be able to live in a world where uh, we don't have to say Black Lives Matter because they do matter. There's not going to be a point where racism exists. I hope that that's going to happen. That's the world I would like to see. That's the world I'm trying to get to happen. Um, so that's one of my first. Okay, so music time. We're going to start oh my goodness. with uh, Alexander Hamilton. This is the opening song, and I can't play everything for you. But this is the song that started everything. 16 bars that Lin-Manuel Miranda came up with because he read a, a biography on Hamilton was like, he read the whole thing and he was like, I have to do this through rap. I have to tell this through rap. That's his creative mind going, right? So this is the first 16 bars he started with. How does a bastard orphan, son of a whore and sonsman, dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean, reverence impoverished and scholar, grow up to be a hero and a scholar. The ten dollar founding father without a father got a lot smarter by working a lot harder by being a lot smarter. Okay, I can't do the whole thing. I would play the whole musical for you. I, I know, I know every song by every word now, and I'm working on the choreography now. Um, and the thing is, to some people, we're honoring a part in our history that not everyone is essentially, a prou pr essentially proud of. And I'm not black, so I cannot give you that point of view. But as a Latina, a Hispanic woman, I can tell you that I am okay with this because it's our version of history. And it's not a, just a bunch of white people on stage, and that sounds bad, right? But that's not what we are. We're a nation of immigrants, and Alexander Hamilton was an immigrant. Let me be the first to tell you if you didn't know. He came from the Caribbean. He wasn't born in the US, right? And we, we hadn't even established yet that we were our own when he got here. The revolution was starting. But he was an immigrant, and they called him that. You know, John Adams called him Creole bastard. So even back then, right, back then that was when everything was happening, but he was a founding father. I wouldn't be here today if on either of my family, my mother or my father's side, someone hadn't immigrated to America. But I'm a citizen because I was born here. But I'm a product of immigrants, right? Maybe not direct, but I am. And I feel like I have value in this world and I feel like I have a right to be here and some people will have told me that you know and I've heard that oh, you're an exception because you're so smart and you you have all this and it's like no we all are we all have that potential every person in this world has the potential to do anything so 
not, there's not an exception. I just have the privilege of not having to work as hard as my parents and their parents and their parents' parents. I have that privilege. And my parents remind me that every day. And I'll be the first to acknowledge it, right? We all have our own privileges, and that's mine. One of them. Okay, so the next one is the Schuyler sisters, and I'm going to talk to you guys about this in a few weeks because I'm putting together a New York playlist, and this one oh, gets me so excited to get into New York. Okay. There's nothing rich, folks. Okay, hold on. I'm going to speed it up just because we have Aaron Burr. If you don't know who Aaron Burr is, he's the villain in our history, uh, but he was a vice president to Thomas Jefferson for his first term, uh, but he is the villain in our history, right? Because he shot Alexander Hamilton. Uh, so here we go. And really quick, sorry, I'm like all over the place because Hamilton has so many different layers. The way Hamilton uses Aaron Burr to tell his side of the story, right? We don't know his side of the story, but what we can assume, because if you look, they went toe to toe in everything they did. They had a lot of the same accomplishments and but because he shot Alexander Hamilton, we don't know what Hamilton could have done if he stayed alive longer. Uh, we, we view him as a villain, but he did a lot for this country. He was a vice president of our country. So, okay, here we go. Hold on, hold on. I want to get it right here. Look around, look around, the revolution's happening in New Shouting in the square It's bad enough that he violence on our shore No ideas in the air Look around, look around okay. oh, I'm gonna fast forward again because I want to get to this one part So, obviously Women, right? We still don't have equal rights I'm a feminist And I will So, they use the Schuyler sisters to kind of bring some of that early, early feminism like we want to be a part of this too. So there's a part where Angelica uh, Schuyler, who is Eliza Ham Hamilton's oldest sister, she is talking to Aaron Burr. I've been reading Common Sense by Thomas Paine. Some, Some may say that I'm intense or I'm insane. You want a revolution, I want a revelation. So listen to my declaration. We hold these truths to be so evident that I'm not created equal. And when I meet Thomas Jefferson, uh, I'ma compel him to include women in the sequel. Work! Look around, look around. <sighs> like, include women in this sequel, right? And we have made strides, but we're not there. We are not, right? I was talking to you guys about the Equal Rights Amendment when with the, uh, the amazing uh, show Mrs. America on Hulu. And just this year, this last year, we, we hit the number of states we would, we would have needed back then by that date to have ratified the Equal Rights Amendment for it to be a place. Now, in 2019, 2020, we're at that point, but it's still not happening. I'm gonna beat that. Okay, so okay. So next one, this is nonstop. After the war I went back to New York. After the war I went back to New York. This is Aaron Burr and Hamilton again, talking about how they went to toe toe to toe on a lot of things. But he's in that practice law. I practice law, Burr work next door. Even though we started at the very same time. Alexander Hamilton began to climb. How to account for his rise to the top? Man, the man is nonstop. Gentlemen of the jury, I'm Okay. So I, I really do like the, how they use Burr's perspective in this musical, right? We, we don't, again, not perfect history. We don't know every single thing that happened. But what's cool is that the way Lin-Manuel Miranda and the other writers have incorporated actual documents of our history into these lyrics. And these lyrics, oh, you guys know, I'm a, I love my lyrics. I, there's nothing like it. Okay. This one is uh, George Washington, first president of the United States, talking to uh, Hamilton about how he wants to do his farewell address, which, amazing piece of history to look back on, right? Mr. President, you asked... 
Doctor, I don't know what you heard, but whatever it is, Jefferson, Jefferson started it. Thomas Jefferson resigned. Okay, sorry guys, I need to speed it up. I need to. Okay, right here. I need you to draft an address. Yes, he resigned. You can finally speak your mind. No. He's stepping down so, so he, he can, can run, run for president. president. Yeah. Good luck defeating you, sir. I'm, I'm stepping down. down. I'm, I'm not running, running for president. president. I'm sorry, what? One last time. Relax, have a drink with me. One last time. Let's take a break tonight, and then we'll teach him how to say goodbye. We'll teach him how to say goodbye, right? Because Washington set the precedent for all of our presidents, right? Um, resigned after eight years, two terms of office. You know, I, I remember my dad talking about this, not just in high school, but when I was little, you know, just Washington's farewell address and how he warned us against par about parties and uh, international uh, affairs, everything. And we haven't exactly listened to him in everything, but he did it, and now all of our presidents have a farewell address, right? They they talk about what they've learned as president. They talk about their time, and I, I thought that was beautiful, the way that they did it, and it's kind of like a sad song, but also kind of like when you get to the end of it, you feel so... I, my mom and I were crying. You know, I cry every single time. I watch this musical at least three times. There are multiple sad parts, but it's like you can feel the way it's conveyed that George Washington was proud of what he had done, but he knew it was time for the next person because that's our democracy. Okay, so this is the final uh, song in the musical. It's called Who Lives, Who Dies, Who Tells Your Story, right? Because we're telling the story of Alexander Hamilton, Aaron Burr, all of these people, our founding fathers, uh, and but who, who tells this story? How is your story told? What is your legacy? How is your legacy? So, this is the entire cast. Let me tell you what I wish I'd known When I was young and dreamed of glory Then you no don't control of who lives, who dies, who tells your story President Jefferson, I I'll give him this His financial system is a work of genius I couldn't undo it if I tried And, and I, I tried, tried. So they, they're telling Hamilton and how after he died, we had all these people who didn't necessarily agree with him that went against him in po politics, uh, talking about what he had done, right? And like, I got to give it up to him because he did all of this, right? And that's then, right? Our founding fathers. In 20, 30 years, when I, what I think about when after I finish this every time, how are we going to see what's going on right now? Not just our president, but with the Black Lives Matter movement, but the pandemic, all of it. How are we going to view that? How is our history, how are our history books going to portray that? How are my kids going to study that? You know, uh, there's always a joke for kids who take AP, the DBQs, right? We use political cartoons. These political cartoons nowadays, like, they would have to write essays on them, and I'm so excited. I told my mom, I was like, I'm so excited for my kids to come up and ask me what this meant and how it was, how it, how it felt to live through that. But Hamilton raises the questions that we need, especially right now. You know, what are we doing right now to change uh, America, our revolution? And I do believe this is a revolution. You're always going to have naysayers and people who don't agree. There's always going to be people who aren't really sure, and that's okay. We're not perfect people. We don't all have the answers. We don't have the answers. But in 20, 30 years, 100 years, if the world survives that long, let's see with the environment, how is this all going to be seen? And I think that's an important question to ask. I know I want to leave my own legacy. My dad, you know, he started it. Our grandparents have started our legacy for our family. It's so how do we carry on, me and my brother, we're both dealing with that right now. How do we carry on that legacy for us, but also for them, you know? And I know what I want to do right now. Maybe that's going to change. I hope it doesn't because I know what I have planned now is something that's close to my heart. And I know that 
it's going to make my parents and my grandparents and all of my ancestors proud. But what about everyone else? Who's going to tell my story? Okay. Moving on from Hamilton. Watch it. Okay, it's on Disney+. Plus. You do not get a free trial. So if you do not have Disney+, Plus, I recommend you get it anyway. I mean, who doesn't want all of the old uh, princess movies? You've got the new ones. Star Wars. The His uh, National Ge Geographic's on there. You know, they... They own a lot of stuff, okay? So, Marvel, I, I mean, just come on. Okay, so, switching gears to Taylor Swift. This, I woke up to Catherine, my brother's fiance, texting me to text because she does, she, they're in New Jersey, right? So, different time zone. Woke up to, like, 10 texts. Oh, my God, Taylor Swift is dropping now. My mom, the first, she, the minute she heard me wake, wake up, Taylor Swift is dropping an album because... I love Taylor Swift, okay? And she has been there for me, <laughs> right? Not her literally, but her music has been there for me. I have grown with her. I was just talking to my friend Jossie today. I was like, because this is one of the, f her album is listed as explicit. And I, I tweeted, it was like, six-year-old me, six-year-old Gabby that's still inside of me, every time she cusses, I like... <laughs> I like gasp and I laugh, but I'm like, oh my goodness, like, wow, I'm growing up listening to this music. I'm growing with it. Um, so these were the songs that through first, first listen through, second, third, I can't tell you how many times I've listened to it in the past 18 hours, um, that caught my attention that I'm listening to right now that I love. It is a bit of a different sound for her. It's Catherine pointed out, she was like, I think it's going to be, just based on the imagery that we were given, right, I think it's going to be more like Safe and Sound from The Hunger Games, because she did do a, a song for The Hunger Games, and I'm, it was pretty right, but Taylor Swift basically, with her statement that she said was, while she's been in quarantine, she had images come to her, and she felt like she had to tell people's story for them, uh, and she, obviously, these people she has ties to, but she was like, I... I, their stories came out of me. They poured out of her. They, it wasn't a planned album. But quarantine can be creative for some people. It can be helpful for some people. It can bring new things. Um, I hope my two weeks in quarantine, like really tight quarantine where it's just me, is going to bring <laughs> uh, creativity on my end. We'll see. Maybe I'll do my own version of Hamilton, but for the Civil War, because I love the Civil War. Um, Oh, okay, so I almost forgot. I was going to recommend this to go along with Hamilton, kind of in the revolutionary era, right? I have a show for you guys to watch, not just watch Hamilton, but a show, it's on Netflix, it's called Turn, and it's about Washington's spies during the Revolutionary War period. My dad and I watched it, and when he, my dad made me watch it at first, and then it got so good that I was like, how do you not like this? So three seasons on Netflix, it's great, I'm pretty sure it's BBC. Uh, I would I definitely recommend watching that too and it, it'll teach you a little bit about history obviously but it's not perfect again uh, but it is good okay so now back to Taylor Swift so this one this is the very first one on her the album it's called the one and I like the I, I like the vibe I'm feeling it I like the lyrics you know me okay some expletives. I'm doing good, I'm on some new shit. Been saying yes instead of no. I thought I saw you at the bus stop, I didn't though. I hit the ground running each night. I hit the Sunday matinee. I don't know. It's light. It's airy. They're most. I'm. All of them are slower songs. You know, they're not her usual pop. Like I and like I hate to say, it, but like re, like pop, right? Pop. A lot of people don't like pop because it's like so. I don't know. I don't even know how to say it. But I like pop. It makes me feel better. <laughs> but uh, it's it's more serious. Um, and I. 
Swifties, longtime Swifty fans will tell you we love her serious music and we wish some of her ballads that she's done that she would do that again. Um, so for me, this was definitely like a uh, an album where I was like, <sighs> I feel like she's kind of listening to us, but like obviously she's doing her thing, right? But I'm going to support her with whatever she does. But for me and in my point in my life, this is the kind of music I need right now. You know, it's hectic life and to just kind of chill, listen to some good music. Okay, so this next one she released a music video for last night. It's called The Cardigan. Her music videos have changed so much and evolved over the years that it's, I, I don't even know how to describe it anymore. It's just, all I can say is it's Taylor Swift. Um, but she looked beautiful, as always, and she made a point to acknowledge uh, all of the COVID-19 restrictions that were put on them, but also how they followed them. And she thanked all the people that made it possible for even to her, for her to even create that music video by following all of the protocol. But she, and she was like, I even did my own hair and makeup. And she's like, so sorry if it's not good, right? But, you know, I think it was, I think it's really cool that she acknowledged the people who helped even make it possible. Okay. This is called Cardigan. And I went through a cardigan wearing phase in middle school. I had so many different color cardigans with different patterns, let me tell you. Okay. Vintage tea, brand new phone, high heels on, cobblestones. When you are young, they assume you know nothing. That's true. Sequin smile, black lips. vibe and chill right I had one of my friends text me last night that she was listening to it and she doesn't listen to Taylor Swift as much as like me she doesn't like many of her songs because that's not the genre of music she listens to but she was like I'm vibing to this Gabby like I think it's perfect for what's going on like I said it's hectic time she's like it's like I can and I was like I thought that was so cool because I not all my friends listen to Taylor Swift my friends they won't say it, but they get annoyed with me because I listen to Taylor Swift so much and like don't give me the aux cord in a car uh, Taylor Swift will come up at least three times if I hit shuffle. Okay So this next one is called August and this one was like the first one I was like I need to hear that again right now and I love this. I love August, right? I love the month of August Coming up not only because I love school and school starts in August normally uh, three out of my four I have four main women in my life that I look up to and that I cherish and love every day. Uh, used to just be three, but four now. Um, my grandmothers and my mother, uh, not to say that my other women in my family aren't amazing, right, but these are the ones I'm very close to that I see every day. So my grandma Maria, who is my dad's mother, her birthday is in August. She's a Leo like my mom. My mom is born in August, so their birthdays are coming up. Uh, and then Catherine is born in August. Christmas in August, that's how you remember, uh, the 25th. Um, and like, I don't know, Catherine doesn't usually watch these, but so she won't see this. But I look up to Catherine, I love Catherine. You know, she's been the big sister I've always wanted uh, because her and my brother were friends long before they got together and got engaged. Um, and she's, she was always treating me right, unlike my brother's guy friends that were mean to me. She would come and check on me, you know, uh, and I look up to her. She's doing amazing things. She's gone through a lot in her life, and she's persevered. Um, and my mom, of course, she's my mom. I posted a Twitter thread the other day about her and her work and how no matter how frustrated I get uh, that she works so much, I know that she does it because she has a big heart and... She doesn't need praise or money or anything else. She just wants to do right by the people she represents. Oh, I'm tearing up just thinking about that because I, I, that's serious for my mom. You know, my grandma Maria, one of the strongest people I know. And she's taught me a lot, even though I don't see her as much as I would like to or be, we live our lives, right? But she's taught me a lot in just the few times I've spent with her. My grandmother Sarah is born in my May, my month, which is May, so not August, but I love that my grandmother, uh, my grandma Sarah is born in May with me and my brother. 
I think that's really cool. I love how my family is kind of just like all in the same months. Okay, so this is August. <laughs> Hold on, I think I'm gonna speed it up because I want to get to this. The bottle of wine thing. Just listening to her like talk about that kind of stuff I, again, it makes me laugh. But I, like August, right? My mom, she lo she her favorite thing to drink is she doesn't drink wine all the time. But when she does drink, it's wine. And uh, I I don't know. I guess I don't know many adults that drink wine, right? Um, but I, I was like, Mom, that's you. It's your song, your month, right? Okay, this next one is called Illicit Affairs, and I think this is the cover because she made eight different album covers uh for the cds and vinyls i think this is the one katie got um but i got oh crap uh i didn't tell my mom i bought one but i bought clandestine meanings which is also in this song okay this is my mom's shirt by the way Nobody sees you leave. I don't know all the words yet, guys. Your head, keep your eyes down. Tell your friends you're out for a run. You will flash and you will return. Take the road less traveled by. Tell yourself you can always stop. What started in beautiful rooms ends with paintings and parking lots. That's the thing about illicit affairs. Oh, so good. I think that one's my favorite right now. Ask me again in two weeks. It's going to be different. I guarantee it. Okay, and this last one is Invisible String. And Jossie and I were like going gaga over this one. So that's what I've got for you tonight for in terms of music. Um, I'm not really watching anything. I'm, again, I'm reading for class. Um, just finished James Baldwin. <sighs> Notes of a Native Son. It's a it's a book, right? But it's a novel. But it's his a collection of his essays that he has written. He had written over the years. And <sighs> James Baldwin is someone that during the time we're living in right now with Black Lives Matter, if you want to educate yourself uh, about you know, perspective and privilege and just everything. His essays uh, that he wrote, I learned so much from them. And to see his point of view, what he had to go through, just so specific, so many specific things in his life that he encountered. Uh, the book was published in 54, but the essays had come out previously before that. Um, and then I, I had the one where it was like, uh, they revisited it, so it was like preface to the 1984 edition. He died sadly very young, and I th I think that's a tragedy. I think if he were alive right now, um, he would be one of the people we would be looking at the most for guidance. And you know, I I'm gonna read some more of his essays. I know that. Uh, so James Baldwin, definitely read him. Uh, I'm gonna I'm starting. No, I'm not starting. I started the Bell Jar with Sylvia Plath. Um, and then I've gotten, you know, after having a conference with my teacher, he gave me some recommendations. I'm really excited to read new books. And so I think I'm going to start recommending books to you guys, too, once I start reading a lot more. I gave up on reading. I think everyone kind of stops reading at some point in their life. Uh, after, when, when you're a kid, you love to read, right? You just tear through the books. But then as you get busier and time goes on, you're like, you don't have time to read. But I'm so glad that, you know, literature is one of the things I'm going to be studying in college so I can read more. Uh, 
and learn more from obviously what what's in front of us um thank you guys for joining me tonight i will be back next week let me think about this let me let me pull up a calendar real quick because we're going to talk about because i will be moving to new york oh my goodness and i will start my show i'm going to do two shows for you in quarantine that's because it's going to be friday night and i'm still going to be quarantined but um let me see one two three we really have three shows left where i'm going to be in fresno so pretty soon i'm going to be on the east coast on east coast time um and probably starting earlier here but same time around over there um and i think that's really cool i'm excited to go to new york the revolution is i wouldn't say the revolution is happening just in new york it's happening all over the country and i want to say you know COVID-19 is very serious, always has been, still is. Please wear your mask, please follow protocols. Um, some states are stabilizing, others aren't. Others are getting worse and I'm very glad that I have had, you know, the luck and the, I don't know, to, to not get sick and that n I haven't been personally affected, very, very close to me anyway, um, but there are there are people who are losing their family members losing people that they care about and I, I don't think any life is one that should be taken away you know so and for me anyway you're saving lives by following protocols by wearing masks you're stopping the spread so please do that please listen to science um for Black Lives Matter, we're still, it's still happening. Things are still happening. And what I love is that not only has this sparked more of an attention to Black Lives Matter, but it's sparked more attention to all of the problems going on, not just in our country, but in the world. You know, we're, generations, younger generations are calling things out now as we're seeing them because we're tired. Well, I, I'm 19 and I'm tired of this. I can't imagine how it feels to be, you know, my parents' age and still see this going on. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine how it feels to be my grandparents' age, you know? And I had a conversation with my grandma the other day and she was like, you know what, Miha, I've, I had gotten used to it. And she was like, I'm glad this is happening. The fact that they got used to racism, no one should have to get used to it. No one should have to oh, it's always going to be there. No. <laughs> we can eradicate racism because it's taught. So hopefully you do believe that all lives matter and you focus on black lives right now and later we'll focus on other people who need it. But right now, it's still happening. It's a movement. And I think that in Hamilton, I, I heard it say, it's like, this isn't a moment, it's a movement. That's what they said, and we say it all the time. It's not a trend, it's not trending. Just because it's trending doesn't mean you can post about it on your social media and feel like my performative activism is done, right? You're performing for the people on your social media. What are you doing in your daily life to implement that? I'm educating myself, I'm talking to people that I know don't necessarily have the same beliefs as me. I'm trying to better myself and learn what I can do. What are you doing? Are you helping or are you part of the problem still? And I'm not trying to call anyone out. I don't, I don't know. I'm asking you to ask yourself that question just like we reflect on our re week. Reflect on yourself. I think that's important. Oh, my mother's calling me. Okay, thank you again for watching. I know I went first this time. I went on time, but my dad is coming up. Uh, the Supermix uh, Cheap Date Night is coming up with special guests. You will find out in just a few minutes. So keep on, keep watching. Stay tuned for uh, Cheap Date Night with Supermix. Thank you. I will see you guys next week.